But again, the FWER um, is, and the Bonferroni correction are a bit too strict. Yeah. So instead of this, what we can talk about is a new concept. Uh, and this new concept is called false discovery rate. And it was introduced by Benjamini and Hochberg in 1995. Uh, and they are from my university, the Tel Aviv University, but I don't know them. Uh, it is defined to be the number of type one errors out of all discoveries. Yeah, so we will see this uh, very soon, but why, why would we want to care about the false discovery rate instead of like the probability of uh, making even one error? What, one example is that we test how a new treatment affects for the better hundreds of different aspects. Yeah, so it can maybe uh, improve your uh, blood pressure or improve your metabolism. I don't know. It has a lot, a lot of effects. Okay, so we don't care if a specific aspect is true or not. So we don't care about the specific aspect, if it's really improving your heart, um, heart or not, if it's really improving your eyes or not. What we care about is the overall, okay? Is it really overall improving? So in that case, if it's overall improving, then we should recommend this new treatment. If not, then we should not recommend it. So we are willing to make some mistakes, say 10% or 5%, yeah? Because we don't care about the individual discovery, we just care about the overall results. So this is one example. And another example where we might care more about the FDR is that we want to screen some of the uh, hypothesis. So we do it as a first step to narrow down uh, the list of hypotheses to the most uh, promising ones. Yeah. So first we we take uh, we have like a huge list. Let's say uh, hundred thousand hypotheses, and then we screen it down. And now we focus on the twenty thousand hypotheses. Yeah, maybe five percent or ten percent of them is wrong, but now we have we can focus only on them. What the FDR is, okay, suppose we can make a contingency table, a two by two table, where on the left side, we have uh, the true uh, positions. Yeah, if H null is true or H null is false. So suppose we know it somehow, an Oracle told us, and these are the rows and the columns are the, what we chose. Did we choose to accept the null hypothesis or we chose to reject the null hypothesis. Yeah, so all of these are just notations that I gave, UTVS, and they are random variables. Uh, we don't see them. The only thing we see is R, yeah? If we made some procedure and we decided to reject some null hypothesis, then we see the number of null hypothesis that we rejected and it will be R. So we know M and we know R and we know M minus R, but all of this, we don't really know. Yeah, these are unobserved and variables and these are unobserved quantities because we don't really know how nobody told us yeah 50 of the 100 hypothesis that you are testing is uh, true no no one told us this but we know that there is some quantity which is true but we don't know which yeah so the main point is that we only observe r and the false discovery rate is uh, defined as the expectation of q where q is v divided by r so V is the number of false positives that we made, basically, where H0 was true, but we rejected it. Yeah, so this is the number we rejected out of all of the discoveries we made. Okay, and you can also write this like this. It's very easy to show. Yeah, because we can use conditional um, probability to divide it into the two cases. Yeah, one where R is equal to zero times the value of Q, which will be zero. So this term will cancel out, plus uh, the, all the cases where r is greater than zero times the value of this. So we can also get to this expression over here, which is also mentioned in the original paper. Okay, one thing uh, that we should note is that FDR is actually smaller than FWER. So whenever we control for the FWER, we all will also control for the FDR. Yeah, so uh, they also show this in the original paper, but um, it's fairly easy and it's not so important. The, the main benefit of the using FDR is that if we use the FDR, we get more power. So how I like to think about it, and I could be completely wrong, please take everything with a grain of salt. I'm just a master student. Um, suppose, um, look at this graph. Yeah, so we have 
Yeah, so we have here the negatives and we have here the positives. Yeah, let's call it the positives. Yeah, and in a circle is what we chose to reject. Yeah, the hypothesis we chose to reject or the hypothesis we chose to say that there are positives. Yeah, this is our signal. This is the signal which is positive. So uh, what FWER kind of does, it's really, really uh, strict. Yeah, it will reduce the circle to something maybe like this. Yeah. To reduce it to be very small. And yeah, the, then the chance of having an error, a false positive, will be very small. But you will also not capture, yeah, all of this you will not capture, yeah, all of this you missed. Yeah. So um, instead of that, what the FDR does, or um, if you are trying to control for FDR, what it will do, it will, yeah, maybe it will reduce a bit, but yeah, it will try to keep more of the circle. Yeah, so it might reduce a bit, but it will also try to keep more of the circle. It will have more power in general than the um, FWER. Okay, so Benjamini and Hochberg, they didn't just define this new uh, quantity called the FDR. They also suggested a procedure where, uh, which they proved can control the FDR. So if you want that your false discovery rate will be less than 0 0.05 or less than 0 0.1, they offered a method that um, supposedly should do this. So you decide on some FDR level, yeah, let's call it Q star, and you order the p-values from uh, P1 all the way to uh, Pm, okay? So you order it. And then what you actually do, you start with the largest p-value and you check if the indice of it divided by m times the uh, value that you chose, q star, if the p-value is less or equal than this quantity. Yeah, if it is, then you re reject all the ones that came before it. But probably for the largest p-value, it won't happen. So you will go down, 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 down until you get to some p-value where it does happen, maybe. And then you reject all the ones that came before it. Okay, so this is the procedure. And yeah, so the adjusted p-values, if you do this in R, uh, you will get an adjusted p-value. So what you will get, you won't get a list of the p-values. What you will get, you will get the p-values this times m divided by i. And always you will get the minimum of those uh, that came um, after it. Yeah, so it could be that we start from the, the end, yeah, and we get to the first P that we reject all the rest, but it could be that one P after it, uh, if we would have checked this, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be true that P of that index will be less or equal than that index divided by M uh, times Q star. So what you will get, it will get the minimum value from his, himself and the one that came after him, yeah? And then maybe we get something lower and lower and lower, but this is how the procedure works. And let me give you a concrete example. So let's say I have these p-values, they are already uh, sorted, and I chose a q to be 0 0.05. So we start from the last p-value, the largest p-value, and we ask, is this less than, since the index of this is 10, then is it less than 10 divided by 10 times 0 0.05, which is 0 0.05? Well, 0.6 is obviously not less than 0.05, so we continue on. Yeah, and we do this for 0.5, so et, et cetera, and then we get to 0.1, and again, uh, this indice is 5, and so is 0.1 less than or equal to 0.025? No, so we continue, and then we get to 0.01, and this is the fourth index. So is 0.01 less or equal than 4 divided by 10 times 0.05? which is 0 0.02. Yes, for this index, uh, we got that it actually is less or equal. So the adjusted p-value for this will be 10 divided by four times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.025, okay? So we will reject all of these, and this will be the value of the adjusted p-value if you use it in R, yeah? Um, and notice that for the first p-value, okay, 0 0.006, it's not less or equal than 0 0.005, okay? But it doesn't matter because 
um, it will be adjusted. We, we reject all of them up to this point. And this will get an adjusted p-value. And since none of these are also true, they will all get the minimum between their values and uh, this value. So okay, they will all be adjusted to 0 0.025. Okay, we can also think of this in terms of a threshold. So here we are thinking it in terms of p-values, but these p-values, suppose they came from um, normal distribution, uh, one-sided test, then these are their uh, corresponding uh, z-values. So instead of asking what is the index that everything up to that we reject, we can also ask what is the threshold that anything uh, above it we reject, yeah? So I took these p-values, these are their corresponding uh, z values. And now if I take this threshold, then I get q is equal to 0 0.6. So it's of course uh, le not less than 0 0.05. But once I get to 2.32, which is the corresponding one to 0 0.01 here, then I get that q is equal to, yeah, so I get that the q here is 0 0.025. And this is the threshold, okay? This is our threshold. Anything above this threshold, we reject. And everything below this threshold, we don't reject. 